Hello once again. Welcome to our video solution to the sixth and final problem from quiz number four. And here is where we get to use Laplace transforms to do something meaningful. Remember, the whole point of them is, well, we want to solve differential equations. That's the whole point of the whole class. Yeah. So we're given an initial value problem here. Ooh, it's a second order differential equation. Y double prime plus 9y prime plus 20y equals 0. And we're given even some initial data, right? Y of 0 is 1 and y prime of 0 is 0. And the goal is to find a function y that satisfies this differential equation. So we're going to use Laplace transforms, meaning we're going to apply the Laplace transform operator to both sides of this equality. The right side is going to be quite simple. The Laplace transform of 0 is 0. The left-hand side, though, we're going to want to use our derivative uh, rules for Laplace transforms, which you can see uh, several of them over here. So first, we need to take all right, the Laplace transform of L uh, of y double prime. So let's write this down. So the Laplace transform of y double prime, well, this is given over here in the table. It's going to be s squared ly minus s times y of 0 minus y prime of 0. And y of 0 is 1. y prime of 0 is 0. Okay, so we can simplify a little bit. We have s squared ly minus s times 1 is minus s. Okay, how about we hit this piece? So what about 9 times the Laplace transform of y prime? Okay, why, again, why though am I just breaking it up? Well, remember we have this linearity property, see the last video, for the Laplace transform. Right? We can break it up uh, piece by piece, and we can even pull constants out. So this is going to be 9 times, okay, again, we can use our table, uh, ly prime is over here, and we have, this is going to be sly minus y of 0. We already see y of 0 is 1, so this is going to be 9sly minus 9 times 1, which is 9. Okay, and then finally, we're taking the Laplace transform of 20y, well, that's just 20, times the Laplace transform of y. That, that, that's not like super exciting. Okay, so what do we have in total? We have uh, s squared ly minus s. All right, then we're going to have plus 9 ly prime, so plus 9 s ly minus 9. And then we need the 20 ly's. And that's going to equal 0, all right, because this is the Laplace transform of 0. Okay, we want to solve now for ly. So we solve for the Laplace transform, right? So we, we took this calculus problem, and now it's just this algebra problem. So if I factor out ly, let's see, I, get an, I have s squared of them, I have 9s of them, and I have 20 of them. What about the other stuff? Well, let's see, there's a minus s, and I'm just going to toss this to the right-hand side. So... Minus s becomes a positive s, and minus 9 becomes a positive 9. Okay, and that's it, right? We've, we've handled everything on that left-hand side. Okay, again, we're trying to solve for L of y, so I'm going to divide by s squared plus 9s plus 20. So this implies Ly equals s plus 9 over s squared plus 9s plus 20. Well, I'd love to know if this thing factors. So uh, let me see here. Uh, 20, that's 2 times 10. No, I'm not going to get a 9 from that. Um, it's also ooh, 4 times 5, and 4 plus 5 is 9. Yep, okay, so there we go. So I can rewrite this as s plus 9 over s plus 5 times s plus 4. And this thing I would like to break up using a partial fraction decomposition, right? Well, that's not so bad. In fact, we saw earlier how we could do that reasonably quickly whenever we had distinct linear factors. So I know this will break up as something over s plus 5 and something over s plus 4. Uh, in order to get the s plus 5 uh, coefficient, I cover up the s plus 5 and evaluate when s equals, well, how do I make this 0? I make s equal to negative 5. So I cover this up. 9 minus 5 is 4. 
negative 5 plus 4 is negative 1. So uh, 9 minus, we said 9 minus 5 was 4, so 4 over negative 1 is negative 4. Okay, then to get this coefficient over s plus 4, I cover up the s plus 4 and make s equal to negative 4. So 9 minus 4 is 5, negative 4 plus 5 is 1, 5 over 1 is 5. Cool. So now I have that the Laplace transform of y is given by this sum of fractions. This negative 4 and this 5, those are just coefficients. I could even pull those out to the front if I liked. And now these pieces, we want to we can either recognize them for what they are, or we could go back up to our table right, and say, oh, uh, where do we get something like that? Well, they look like, right, when you had something like 1 over s plus 5, that looks a little bit like 1 over s, right? It only it's shifted. And 1 over s, I would get that from that top line, right? That would be the Laplace transform of, well, let's see, if that's the first power, then my n better be 0. Ah, so it's just the Laplace transform of 1, right? But this shift, right, over to s plus 5, that'd be like same thing as s minus negative 5. Ah, so I must have taken the function 1 and hit it with e to the negative 5t. Okay, so there we go. So that's what's going on with these things. If I take now the inverse Laplace transform, I get y is equal to negative 4 times, so in this case, the exponential e to the negative 5t, and in this case, e to the negative 4t, of course, times this 5. And that's our solution, right? We actually were able to find a solution to that original y prime plus uh, y double prime plus 9y prime plus 20y equals 0, right? That was our original differential equation. So this is a solution for that, right? Along with, of course, the initial conditions, right? That y of 0 is 1 and y prime of 0 is 0. In fact, that's, that's going to be the only solution to this differential equation. How cool is that? All right, this is going to take practice, of course. There's a lot going on in this, right? You have to first recognize I have a differential equation. Whoops. Then you have to recognize it's an initial value problem. Then you say, okay, what do I want to do? Well, of course, the instructions were really nice. I can apply the Laplace transform. So you got to know your Laplace transform table, all right? You apply it to each of these things, right? Then you want to solve for the Laplace transform, which gives you this nice equation. You solve for L of Y, right? You got to use some partial fractions maybe along the way. And then once you've done that, you got to know, oh, now I want to go backwards. So I have to be able to use my table in reverse, right? But none, none of the work we had to do was actually calculus, right? We were actually able to avoid all the calculus once we had that table and once we've, we've um, uh, proved all these formulas, right, in terms of like the Laplace of the derivative. So, so there we go. Practice, 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 and you too can become a Laplace transform master.